Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44. For I am the Lord your God. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am holy. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, open our hearts to you that we may truly be holy in this, in this world. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. If you want an example of holiness, I guess the best thing to do would be to look at Mother Teresa. It's very easy to talk about her because of the ministry that she had in India. She began her ministry on the streets of Calcutta. She began with an orphanage in a hospital, and she would take people off the street who were ill, and she would take them in to the hospital, and the little sisters would look after them. She was going around collecting money one day, and she came to the house of a Hindu, and she knocked on the door and told him what she was doing and, and who she was, and she held out her hand for an offering, and he spit in it. And he said, she said, okay, that's for me. Now give me something for my children. That's holiness. Serving others is a sign of being holy. That's what God talks about. He says, you will be sanctify yourself and be holy, for I am holy. God's people were created to be holy people. God's people were created to give their lives to God. God's people were created to be holy and made in His image. Now what does that mean? How, okay, Brother Andy, how, how am I holy? Let me, let me read you what C.S. Lewis said. C.S. Lewis says, Christ says, give me all. I don't want so much of your time and so much of your money and so much of your work. I want you. I have not, I have not come to torment your natural self, but to kill it. No half measures are any good. I don't want to cut off a branch here and there. I want to have the whole tree down. The moment you put yourselves in my hands, that is what you are in for. Nothing less or other than that. You have free will and you choose. You can push me away. But if you do not push me away, understand that I am going to see this job through. Whatever suffering it may cost you in your earthly life, whatever inconceivable uh, purification it may cost you after death, whatever it costs me, I will never rest nor let you rest until you are literally perfect, until my Father can say without reservation that He is well pleased with you. He said He was well pleased with me. This I can do and will do, but I will not do anything less. Holiness is turning your life completely over to God and doing the things that God has called you to do. It does not come easy. Why should we even worry about that? Well, I mean, we don't talk about that much at church. And Why should we even bring up holiness? What, what good is that? It might make me do something that I don't want to do. And that's true. It may. It may bring you to the point where you have to do something that you don't like. That you have to give up something that you love. Trying to be holy and follow God and be one of God's children is not an easy task. There are things that you have to do. You have to try to practice love and forgiveness and kindness and peacefulness, and patience. You have to do all of these things, and be all of these things. To be in the will of God means to be holy. Now, understand. I know it's hard. I, I know that it's, it's difficult. And John Wesley talked about that, uh, about sanctification, and what it means. If we, if we live in a life of sanctification, if we live in a life of the will of God, then we are sanctified. John Wesley said, from the time of our being born again, the gradual work of sanctification takes place. In other words, after we are born again, when we are, 
when we accept Christ as our Savior, then the work of sanctification begins. Sanctification is a process. It does not happen overnight. It is a process that we go through as, as God's children. It takes time. It takes a while for us to be sanctified, to be made holy. And it only occurs when we give ourselves to God, like C.S. Lewis talked about, fully. Fully. Wesley says, We are enabled by the Spirit to mortify the deeds of the body of our evil nature. In other words, the Spirit can come into our lives and guide us and help us to be made the children of God, to be made holy. The Spirit can guide us and lead us so that we can give up those things that we have to give up, so that we can do those things that we have to do to be holy, to be sanctified. We go on from grace to grace while we are careful to abstain from all appearance of evil, Wesley says, and are zealous of good works. Go out into the world and do good works, do good things. I believe in the theology of the hammer. I don't feel like I'm any closer to God than when I am mixing concrete on the floor of a building in, in, in Jamaica. If you've never seen people who are poor, poor concrete, you need to go see that. You know, we get this mixer thing, and we turn it on and the concrete gets mixed up. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all know? Nod your heads. Yeah, you know? What they do in Costa Rica and in, in Jamaica is they pour all the concrete out on the floor, and they put all of the cement out on the floor, and they make a little hole in the middle, and they start adding water, and they're sitting there mixing concrete on the floor. It's an amazing thing to watch. But I feel close, very close to God when I am doing those things, whether it's wrapping wire or cutting rebar with a hacksaw, which I do not recommend. Um, we wore out blades. You, that was in Mexico. We wore out blades. Uh, you, you couldn't get halfway through rebar with, without changing the blade. And we, we found out we need one of those rebar cutters, and we didn't have one. But I feel very close to God when I'm working with people like that. It, it, you know, the first mission trip I went on, I thought, well, you know, we're going to take God to the people. And what I found out was God was already there. He was waiting for us to get there so He could show us what, what to do. God was already there with those people. They were lovely people. In Mexico, where I went, we would work uh, most of the day, and then when it came time to, to knock off, the people went home to start preparing their meals, we would kind of walk around a little bit. And they have these little bodegas, little shops that people have in their homes. And they sell chips and drinks and, and that kind of stuff. At that time, I could have a Mexican Coca-Cola, and I highly recommend those too. They taste like the old Coke. Uh, they have, they're made out of pure sugar, not, not fructose. Uh, man, they're good. Can't have any anymore, though. But we would walk around, and, and we would buy a bag of chips for, for the kids that were following us. And there'd be two or three. And as soon as they got those chips open, you'd have about five or six kids run up. And the thing that, that just melted my heart was they would share the chips with everybody. In other words, if one kid had a bag of chips, they all got some chips. How different from what we see sometimes in our own homes and our communities. It was a beautiful thing to witness. It, 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 just, it just warmed my heart to see that. We can be holy because it's a process by which after justification, we are in a process of being made holy like our God. Like our God. While we walk in His ordinances, in His rules, in, in the rules for sanctification, blameless, therein worshiping 
Him in spirit and in truth while we take up our cross and deny ourselves every pleasure that does not lead us to God. It sometimes takes giving up something. It takes giving up something to be holy in this life. It's not easy. This morning at early church, I got confused and put Noah in the belly of a well. <laughs> well, you see, what happened was Jonah was called to go to Nineveh. And Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh. They hated the Assyrians. The Jews hated the Assyrians. They were oppressors and mean and, and just evil people. And Jonah didn't want to go there. So Jonah said, okay, Lord, I'll go. And he went down to the docks. And the first thing he did was board a ship going in the opposite direction of where he was called to go. You know the story. A huge storm came. They had to throw off the cargo. And it still was bad. And finally Jonah came up and said, look, you've got to throw me in the sea. This is happening because God is chasing me. So they took Jonah and they threw him overboard. The sea calmed and Jonah was swallowed by a big fish. Not a whale, a big fish. The Bible is very clear about that. We don't know what kind of fish. Maybe it's a big old grouper, who knows. But Jonah got in, it was inside the whale, and the, inside, inside the whale, inside the fish, and he went down and in the depths of, the, of despair, being inside a fish's belly, and that would be depths of despair, he knew that God was with him. The fish spit him out on the shore, and he walked to Nineveh, and he preached. He walked into the city, into the center of the city, and he began to preach that the, the Assyrians needed to repent or God was going to pour out his wrath upon them. Uh, you know what happened? They repented. They repented of their sins. They went to get their neighbors and they said, Look, we found a guy that smells like fish. That, well, you know, you would if you were in the belly of a fish. And, and he says, We found this guy that smells like fish, but he's, he's preaching a powerful message. And even the king went. And the king put on sackcloth and ashes and he repented of his sins and God did spare the city. Great. That's a great thing. Jonah obeyed God. But then he went outside of the city and he sat down and he, just, he was just gone. Let me tell you, after you preach, you, you just, it, it's, you, or speak, uh, it just takes stuff out of you. Uh, it's, it's hard, you know, it, I'm not complaining, I'm just telling you, it's like, it's like really working. <laughs> you, get, you get drained. And Jonah was, was tired and he went outside the city and he sat down and, and he was complaining to God about saving the Assyrians. He said, I knew that you would do that because you are a God who is abounding in steadfast love and slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. But I knew you would do it. So God calls a bush to grow around Noah, uh, Noah, Jonah, <laughs> to go around Jonah, and he sat there under the shade of that tree, of that, of that bush. And then God sent this little worm, and he crawled into the bush, and he killed it. And Jonah was miserable. And God said, Jonah, if I choose to save my people, what is that to you? Jonah had to do something he didn't want to do. He had to go somewhere he didn't want to go. He had to do something that was, to him, just evil. But God called him, and he went. He went screaming and kicking, but he went. Sometimes we're called in this process of sanctification, of holiness. We're called to go where we don't want to go and do what we don't want to do. 
but God is with us in those times. Wherever we are, wherever we go, we were created to be holy. We were created in the image of God, and we were created to be holy. And it's a process that we go through. It's a process. John Wesley really picked up on this in the Protestant church. And, and we really uh, believe this. this. He said this happens after we are justified. The process of sanctification begins. And that's what it is. It is a process. A process that we go through. I, I have only seen a few people in my lifetime that qualified as saints which is the same root word that is sanctification is saint. Same root word. And one of them was a little lady, about that tall, and she was just about that big around too. She was a sweet lady though. She, she really kept me in line because, and, and look, I had been preaching for all of one year. Okay? I mean, I didn't even know what I was doing yet. I had, I had never preached until... I got in the pulpit at St. Andrew's United Methodist Church in Macomb and preached a sermon. And it was terrible. <laughs> terrible. But I didn't feel too bad because I read about Billy Graham. Billy Graham said he was asked to preach in his home church. And he went in and, and he had this sermon. He had his sermon outline and all that stuff. And, and so he uh, got up in the pulpit and he preached that sermon and he looked at his watch and five minutes had gone by. So he said, he turned back and he started preaching the sermon again. And he preached it again. And he looked at his watch, five minutes had gone by. So he preached it again. And finally he just said, okay, there, there's the benediction. So, but I didn't feel so bad. But I was learning how to preach. And, and this lady kept me in line because she sat like right down there. She and Miss Thweet sat right, right down there, and they brought their Bibles every Sunday, and they looked up scriptures when I quoted one. They took their Bibles, and they looked up scriptures. And they kept me straight. When I needed something, when I needed, you know, when, when the stress just got too much, and I really felt like I needed to, to talk to somebody, I would go and talk to Miss Wilma, because she was a great person, and she would keep me straight. She loved people, she loved me, and she stayed in the Word of God. She, she read her Bible and stayed in the Word of God. And so when I needed something, I knew that I could go there. When I needed refreshing, I would go there and she would read to me the Bible and we would discuss what she read. And I cried when I found out that she had died because she was such a saint. She stayed out of people's business. She didn't gossip. She didn't snoop. She didn't take pleasure in the gossip that went around. <clears throat> Excuse me. She loved God. And I believe, in my soul, that on her deathbed, Miss Wilma was sanctified and, and, and went through the, finished the process of sanctification. It's not easy, but it's well worth it. We have free will, as C.S. Lewis said. We have free will, and we can choose to follow God, or we can choose not to follow God. It's up to us. It's up to us. The grace is there free. The grace is there free. Serving humanity is not a work that will get us into heaven but it is part of the process of sanctification. Helping others, praying, living out a life. And the goal of life is simply this, it's godliness. To be like God. To be purity. To, be, to, to, to have purity in our lives. But most of all, the process of sanctification helps us to grow in faith to grow in faith and be the people of God, the faith that God gives us and gives, continues to give us throughout our lives brings us to sanctification. What I'd like for you to do 
as you go out this morning, I want you to reflect on your life and how God is working in it and how you can be more in the will of God. Go and, and, and sit, sit somewhere and maybe read your Bible and think about what God is calling you to do, what God is calling you to be. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, be with us and bless us as we come, as we come to you and examine our lives. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen.